What is the Orange Revolution? Well, this is an interesting question. In some ways, it sounds odd to me to call this a revolution, as this is not the typical revolution that we as students and observers are used to seeing or even talking about. However, for the sake of compromise, we will go ahead and call this a revolution because of the broad uprising and support of the general population in order to see that a change was made. Speaking of change, the Orange Revolution was essentially an outrage that ensued over election results. However, when it became apparent that the election of 2004 was rigged in favor of incumbent Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych, protesters and demonstrators alike sought to see that this wrong was made right by way of a revote. This time around, the popular candidate Viktor Yashchenko took the victory in a decisive fashion. This was important due to rising unrest within Ukraine about the economic, political, and social limitations that were being seen within the country. The status of the country was becoming overwhelmingly negative in international perspectives as well as domestic. Many were calling for more democratic systems and sought this change through Yashchenko. However, if Yanukovych took the victory, this would spell disaster for those hopeful for the former outcome. Many in the eastern part of the country saw Yanukovych as their candidate, and with this, they saw themselves aligning with Russia more than any other Eastern European nations. This was exactly the opposite of those on the western side of Ukraine, who saw Yashchenko as their leader, and the leader of the new democracy. These were the dynamics that were being seen within Ukraine before and during the revolution. These were the thoughts and mindsets of the people who sought independence as a nation of Ukraine. However, where they differed was in the path they wished to achieve the nation's independence. They being the supporters of both Yanukovych and Yashchenko. Now, the Orange Revolution of 2004 was a nonviolent campaign for change. In some ways, this was interesting considering the area and time period this took place. Expanding on that further, Ukraine was a nation that was trying to establish itself after the fall of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was still trying to maintain control of the country, though indirectly, through candidates that it actively supported. In turn, those candidates would offer support and alliance with what is now Russia. For many Ukrainians, this was unacceptable, as they had seen what, you, what Russia had to offer in the past and this was simply not a favorable way of life for them any longer. With that being said, the fact that the 2004 revolution was able to maintain its essentially bloodless status was shocking, and that was multiplied even more so because of its success. While there is not much literature about why this was a nonviolent campaign, I have some of my own beliefs that are borrowed from both Plato and Martin Luther King. However, first, I believe it is worth noting that many involved in the protests, whether they were for Yanukovych or for Yashchenko, saw this as another conflict in a history of long political corruption and overall dissatisfaction with Ukraine and neighboring countries in the region. It was just simply frustrating to think that the continuance of such wrongs was going to be the citizens' reality yet again. For many, this was not fair. However, they did not want to see war and bloodshed again. This was something that citizens of Ukraine had seen before and would like to avoid at all costs. Now, with that aside, I believe it is important to view the revolution from the perspective of Plato and his logic behind obedience and disobedience. On the one hand, Plato would like to escape with his colleague. However, he realizes that as a citizen of the region in which he resides, he has a contractual duty to follow the laws within that country or within that region. He simply cannot react violently or disobey simply because of him not agreeing with the conditions that occupy his current situation. You see, this, this applies to the Orange Revolution when discussing how the people went about achieving the goal of a revote and therefore winning their candidates those who were not in favor of Yanukovych. 
could have simply began violently demonstrating in the streets while attempting to directly over overthrow the government in order to implement their desired democratic system. Now, borrowing from the perspective of MLK, it is important to understand why this nonviolent campaign had to remain nonviolent. One of those reasons was for legitimacy. Legitimacy can be broken down in several ways. In one sense, the legitimacy of the overall campaign could not be sacrificed and had to be well maintained in order to achieve successful change. Simply put, if a majority of the population saw the campaign as one that was foolish, it would quickly lose support. In addition to this, it was important to maintain legitimacy with the government as well. This was just as important because, once again, the government had to perceive the campaign as not only a serious one with clear and reasonable goals, but also one that could not be ignored due to its size and overall support. So in summary, it's important to take away from the Orange Revolution not only its size and success of the campaign, but it's also worth noting how they achieved this change. This was not, this was not violence. In doing this, I feel that it is imperative to acknowledge the works of both Plato and Martin Luther King Jr. when discussing the Orange Revolution, as this theorist and activist share equally important and vital views about nonviolence and how it should be used when faced with an opposing government. Plato, with his logic and reason behind why nonviolence should be the route taken, and Martin Luther King Jr., with his discussion centered around legitimacy and, maintain, and maintaining this status throughout the campaign. I believe it is fair to say that those involved with the Orange Revolution did this with great success, and while in many ways it was an ugly campaign, the end goal was achieved and without a single life lost. Thank you.